Hello there, my fellow mech warriors, and welcome to another lore video about a battle mech of Battletech. Today's video is gonna be a bit different from my usual stuff, and it might even end up being uploaded as an extra in addition to all the other things I do. That's because this episode was sponsored by one of my subscribers who really, really likes this particular battle mech. It's also probably gonna end up being a bit shorter than my usual videos, since there isn't a lot of info available on this topic. Nevertheless, ladies and gentlemen, I give you the Rakshasa Heavy Mech, and I do really hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. I'm your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us learn a few things about it, shall we? Some basic technical details for it include It is a heavy mech, weighing at 75 tons, its top speed is 86 km an hour, and its rounded price is 18,944,000 C-bills. Ever since the Inner Sphere's first look at an Omnimech on The Rock in 3049, the mech designers have marveled at the design excellence of the so-called Mad Cat or Timberwolf as it is known to the clans. Very few could believe that the firepower of a marauder and a catapult could be combined on the same chassis, and still move at a 33% higher speed. NAIS technicians and students have been laboring at that point for more than 5 years to emulate the Mad Cat's design profile. A recent breakthrough at the time had produced a masterpiece of design, the Rakshasa, so name for the mythical creature that mimicked its adversary's appearance and skills. Whether because of or in spite of the tight security around the Rakshasa project, rumors abound that this breakthrough which led to the final design came from the analysis of a captured mad cat. No matter the truth, the Rakshasa is an amazing product of years of development. Built on a heavily modified GM Marauder chassis, this mech uses endosteel technology to strengthen and lighten the skeleton. After long debate, the designers chose to focus on firepower rather than safety. They eliminated the plans for case to make room for an Artemis IV fire control processor. These sensors provided the two federated 10-shot LRM packs with unmatched accuracy and tight shot grouping. It is hoped that this accuracy will make up for the smaller launches, since clan LRM racks are considerably lighter. The Rakshasa's bite comes from two R-mounted Exostar ER Lodge lasers, each of which is supplemented by a Martel medium laser for additional short-range firepower. The muzzles of the weapons are recessed into the mech's forearms, allowing the pilot to engage in hand-to-hand -hand combat without damaging the laser's optics and emitters. A single Martel medium pulse laser rounds out the Rakshasa's armaments, making it a virtual double of its parent design. Despite the shortcomings, the Rakshasa remains a formidable mech, with good accuracy, speed and maneuverability. It also carries 11.5 tons of Starguard ferrofibrous armor, giving it slightly less than maximum armor protection. Though it has found service in units all across the former Federated Commonwealth, the Rakshasa has not become the prestige ride that its designers hoped it would be. Initial combat trials proved promising, as did the first live fire action. When a joint task force was made in 3055 to combat the Red Corsairs, no, not the Huron Blackheart ones, two Rakshasas were rushed to the Kel Hounds, who used them to great success on Ark Royal and Elisa. Unfortunately, the mech earned an undeserved reputation during Operation Guerrero two years later. The 8th Fedcom RCT fielded three of these mechs during their defense of Second Try, two of which were assigned to the RCT command company. As it happened, the entire unit was spread thin, and its commander, Hauptmann General Mitchell Weintraub, got cornered by a Capellan battalion. His bodyguards fought very hard for more than half an hour before reinforcements arrived, but by that time both Rakshasas had succumbed to heat-induced ammunition explosion. Even though he lost a third mech that way, a crusader, Weintraub publicly criticized the Rakshasa, promising never to allow another one into his units. 
A couple of variants of the Rakshasa include the MDG-1AR. This one drops all the weapons apart from the medium lasers. In their place are a pair of snub-nosed PPCs and a group of MML-7s. To protect the missile ammunition, engineers finally installed CASE. The MDG-1B. The 1B variant of the mech is a modification made to make the mech's heat levels more manageable. The two ER large lasers are replaced with standard large lasers, sacrificing some range for heat efficiency. The MDG-2A This mech happened when the Inner Sphere finally decided they couldn't literally clone the Mad Cat and instead did something different. The 2A model removes the mech's arsenal and upgrades it with a new weapons mix geared towards close combat. The main weapon is a rotary autocannon 5. This is backed up at shorter ranges by a large pulse laser, and for point-blank combat the mech carries four medium pulse lasers. A couple of interesting characters associated with this battle mech include Sergeant Major Jessica Nim. Sergeant Nim, a mech warrior only by virtue of the fact that she could pilot a mech when battle casualties left the first Capellan Dragoons short-handed, is an AFFS tech assigned to GM's CAFL facility. Leading a volunteer team of techs, she configured the first MDG-2A, and then piloted it into battle. Though disabled in its first fight, the configuration proved a success. Nim was decorated, promoted, and put in charge of the Rakshasa 2A production, all but ending her brief mech warrior career. Gunsho Haruhiko Namona Having graduated from the Wisdom of the Dragon School, Haruhiko Namona spent 10 years in service to the Dragon before leaving, dissatisfied with DCMS commanders who de-emphasized the qualities personifying a true samurai. He ultimately discovered a small group of like-minded warriors on Solaris 7. He only had moderate luck in the leagues until he won a Rakshasa in a bout. From that point on, Namona and Raiju, as he named the mech, steadily climbed up the ranking ladders, building up quite a following. That following, filled with professional gamblers and warrior wannabes, forced him to once again seek solace in the DCMS. Enlisting at a much lower rank, he rejoined just in time to see action against the Ghost Bear clan, and then again against Duke James Sandoval's invaders. With the epitome of the true samurai, he earned the respect of comrades and opponents alike. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the Rakshasa heavy battle mech for today. I am sorry that there isn't more information available on it, but like I said, the length of the video is not a problem in this case. I made it for someone in particular, and sharing it here is just an added bonus. I hope for everyone. Is the Rakshasa among your favorite battle mechs? What do you like or dislike most about it? Let us all know your thoughts and impressions on it in the comments below. Was the episode informative or entertaining? In that case, please click the like button and subscribe for future content. Thank you very much for watching, and I wish you all an awesome day. This is GDN signing out.